great statesman said, I protest. I protest even if I do so alone. To do the right thing does not require you to be with the majority. It requires you to be with your conscience. I invite Mr. Kamau Karoli to address you on the issue of 183, and I thank you. Senior Council, before maybe you see it, we have received information that your side is going to present uh, two videos and a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the first video will take four minutes, the second video 14 seconds, and the PowerPoint presentation, uh, which has 28 slides. We don't know how long it will take, but just to warn you that that is within your time. Most your surprised. time will be taken into consideration. Most we will not lose time like we did yesterday. We are very keen. Most obliged, my lady. May I please, my lady, the Chief Justice and judges of this court, and good morning. Uh, my lady and my lords, I will be addressing you on, um, mainly on the issue surrounding Article 138 of the Constitution. And my ladies and my lords, the reason why we are starting from there, and which is right about where my learned senior left it off, is that there are many allegations that have been made in this petition. In fact, that seems to be the main issue surrounding these petitions regarding the manner in which the function set out in Article 138, 138.3 and 138.10 were conducted. Uh, one of the, the allegations that has been made is the chairman unilaterally tallied, verified, and declared the results of the presidential elections that there was a requirement for a complete corporate process of internal tallying and approval by the commissioners, and that the chair, chair, chairperson can only act with the concurrence of the commissioners. Now, it's my submission that the reason why these submissions are being made is based on a confusion that stems from a misunderstanding of the nature and character of the commission and the interplay between the commission, the functions uh, bestowed on the commission, and those cast upon the chairman of the commission. So first of all, uh, the question that comes up is, who is the commission? And, I'm, and my learned friend, uh, senior, has alluded to it briefly. But let me just make this distinction, because it is important. The commission, IBC commission, is established, like all the other independent commissions, under the provisions of Article 250 of the Constitution. But more importantly, and this is the distinction that I think is important to draw, if you look at what Article 250 talks about, 251 says each commission shall consist of at least three but not more than nine members. The next one says the chairperson and each member of a commission so that these commissioners are members of the commission, they are not the commission. So that where the law refers to the commission, it is not referring to the commissioners, but it is referring to the body corporate that my learned senior referred to and which is established or, uh, under the provisions of Article 253 of the Constitution, which says that each commission is a body corporate with perpetual succession and a seal. So where in Article 138 reference is made to the commission, it is that body corporate that is referred to. And this is amplified by the provisions of Section 11 of the IBC Act. My lords and my ladies, Section 11.2 of the Act establishes the Secretariat and the Commission, so that the Commission consists of the Commissioners, the Chairman and the Commissioners, and the Secretariat. Then 11.2a defines who the Secretariat is as such professional technical and administrative officers and support staff as may be appointed by the commission in the discharge of his functions under this act. And B, 
very critical also, such public officers as may be seconded to the commission upon its request. This is what comprises